I believe our future depends powerfully on how well we understand this cosmos in which we float like a boat of dust in the morning sky. Sometimes a cool story just falls into your lap, like this one about an off-the-grid straw bale house built by a member of the Land Institute. So what inspired you to build a house like this? It's just off the grid in the middle of a wheat field. Well, I wanted to have a house of my own design and building for, oh, probably decades. Um, and finally got to a place where I could afford to do it and finally got myself to do it. I chose this spot partly because my coworker and neighbor offered to sell it to me, uh, partly because it's removed from the road, uh, secluded, it's not too far from work, it's uh, largely open, I like open savanna type country. When I bought it, it was uh, a wheat field, and I've since replanted it all to perennial grasses. I wanted to build a house that was, well, as they say, energy efficient. I didn't want to depend on the electricity grid and came to not even want to depend on having any kind of wind turbine or solar power. I began living in a house to just start turning things, a house with electricity, just to start turning things off. I didn't just plunge into this and came to realize that it's not, it doesn't seem to me at least, that difficult to do without these sorts of things. Uh, what are the, the, the features, the ecologically conscious features of this house that allow it to operate off the grid without any electrical input whatsoever? Okay. First, I think I should admit the not so ecological features. The roof is steel, uh, but I should never have to replace it, and it's recyclable. Mm -hmm. um, I do have glass windows with vinyl frames. I hope those live as long as I do too. Uh, they're very energy efficient, they're double paned, and I can start with that. The south windows are oriented in relation to the long over, overhang of the roof, so that in the middle of winter, actually from solstice to solstice, sorry, equinox to equinox, <laughs> I've got direct sunlight coming in these windows. In the middle of winter, it's coming pretty much the whole length of the windows, and I've got it oriented the glass coatings oriented so that it actually emits more light, I'm sorry, more energy than most people arrange in their homes. The north windows are more the norm where they're built to retain what's in the house. The south windows are oriented with the coating reversed so that they'll actually emit more heat uh, so I can rely more on passive solar heating in the winter. The, the trade-off there is in the summer they'll also emit more, more heat even though there's no direct light coming in. And that's why I have the shutters. So if I leave during the day, I can shut the shutters. The framing of the house is wood that was reclaimed from an old Air Force base just west of Salina. The stone that forms not the foundation but the base for the straw bales is from a turn of the 19th to 20th century grocery store a county away from here that got torn down that I bought and put in a dump truck and hauled over here. The straw bales are from an organic wheat farmer's wheat field, um, and he baled them to my specs while I watched and helped. Um, the ceiling is, is fresh yellow pine. Uh, the floor, which you can't see in this picture, will be largely the same material that I used for the walls, which is a plaster made of my local heavy clay soil mixed with sand that I dig up from another location near here and horse manure which acts as kind of a binder like miniature rebar and plastered on. The white is whitewash which is uh, does take some fossil fuel to make but if I can judge by the cost of it uh, it might take much less than regular paint. It's very cheap stuff. So the vast majority, majority of the materials are very local, and this is something you've more or less built yourself. I've built most of it myself in terms of man hours. Uh, the big things like putting up the structure, I had help with my family. Putting up the roof trusses, I had help from my friends. Putting the roof sheets up there, they were lifted up to me by friends. But in terms of man hours, it's mostly mine. Now, how would you judge the difficulty of creating a structure like this compared to a conventional dwelling? 
Well, um, I've never built anything uh, to, that you could live in other than this. Uh, nothing even close to it. So I can't say for sure, but I will say that straw bales um, have a lot of difficulties involved. And if I had to do it over again, I probably would build with wood and insulate it some other way. The bales themselves are easy to stack like bricks, but the plastering of them uh, took me months. And I had to redo the, the lime wash. It's a, I've done a building that's uh, novel in ways other than just straw bales, and I've had to learn it myself all the way. I mean, I've read, but that only helps you so much, and then you start making mistakes to do the rest of your learning. The straw bales are, um, are tough to build with. And if I didn't live in a county where there's basically no building code outside city limits, uh, I'm guessing it would have been even tougher because you would have had to convince officials. I mm -hmm. didn't. The sky calls to us. If we do not destroy ourselves, we will one day venture to the stars.